Hello, I drew something, well a couple things, and now I'm going to show you those things. So watch closely and follow the bouncing cursor as we draw something. Do you enjoy looking at old historical portraits, but also the luxuries of indoor plumbing? Same. And for some reason I thought that was gonna be a good segue into introducing what I'm drawing. That didn't really work. <laughs> Basically, I kind of just like wanted to redraw the Mona Lisa, but like modern, I don't know. I'm sure this is done like a million times before, but I wanted to just kind of do it. And then I did a couple other portraits as well. And like, I didn't put a lot of like pre-planning into it. I've gotten in the habit of just kind of recording whatever I draw. And then I was like, well, why don't I just show you? So first up we have the Mona Lisa. I drew her in the same pose. I drew my character at least in the same pose as Leonardo da Vinci's character. So like going into this, I was kind of just doing whatever felt right at the time and I was trying to like modernize the outfit so I was like looking at the original portrait and like seeing the different layers and I was like well how would that translate into today and I kind of saw like a cropped sweatshirt because she has like that layer that ends about the shoulder and then there's like a longer layer so that's why I gave my character a hood I also noticed that Mona Lisa has curly hair it's a lot finer curly but I kind of just went with a more voluminous curl like this was obviously styled and is not natural. If someone has natural hair like this, I'm a little jealous. And then I also noticed that the original portrait has some kind of piece of fabric that goes over her right shoulder. So I gave my character like a backpack because that's the only thing that I could think of that would be like a sash that they would wear cross body like that. For her face, I tried to like, this is where it kind of differed the most. So like Mona Lisa, it's famous because of that. Like, is she smiling? Is she frowning? What's she thinking about? I thought like the modern day equivalent was like that selfie face where like the mouth slightly open they look a little grumpy but they're like staring right into the camera and they're just like mm. you know you know the face <laughs> I can't draw that face clearly <laughs> but I tried and like a good little artist I flipped the canvas it really helps with balance especially when drawing faces you may notice that after flipping the canvas I stylized it a little bit more because I was like getting a little bit more free feeling I was like you know what this is just art for me let me just play around with this <laughs> I don't know, there's like this moment in your art where you kind of just let it go and just do instead of thinking. And this was that moment for me. And part of the doing and not thinking <laughs> resulted in a bucket hat. I don't know if I still stand with this decision. I've never really liked that trend, but I looked at the original portrait and she does have like a veil. And I was like, what's the modern day equivalent of that? Apparently it's the bucket hat. <laughs> The rest of the art kind of stayed the same, just kind of like traced my favorite lines. I did lose the backpack. I don't know when that happened. I'm a little upset about it. I tried to capture Mona Lisa's neckline because I feel like that's kind of popular right now. So I thought that was really easy to just throw it in there. But then when it came to doing the hands, I did change them up a little bit. I didn't like copy them exactly. I kind of just drew them. How I would draw them if like I was kind of trying to recreate the same pose. And what I mean by that is that I didn't look back at the Mona Lisa while I was doing the hands. So I didn't remember what they looked like and I was just doing it how I remembered them, but it was different. But I'm saying it like it's a plus. And then I thought I'll give her a phone. That's a modern. <laughs> So at this point, it looked like this. And of course I flipped the canvas again, balanced some things out. It was looking pretty good, but something, but something. I brought in the Mona Lisa and kind of like put it on top and I realized my proportions were way off and I drew a lot more of the lower half of the body. And I was like, well, I can't just kind of like put this on top and use the same background. <laughs> so what if I just make it a character and design the whole outfit? So I enlarged into the canvas so that I could draw the legs. And this is when I reached a crossroads. Okay, I was like, Okay, like it works. The outfit's good. Like Mona Lisa would wear a skirt, but something's wrong. It's just too much skin. That was like all I could, that's, that's what was in my mind. That was what was running around. I'm just like, it's too much skin for Mona Lisa. But you know, since I was kind of happy with how it looked, I decided to actually enlarge in the canvas widthwise and then duplicate the character so that I could still see my original one while I worked on the next design. Just basically changing up the legs. <laughs> So lowering the opacity of the legs so that I could just kind of draw over them, I decided to give her some pants, some nice wide leg mom jean look, rolled the hem a little bit. Lowering the opacity of the original legs made it really easy to like do that second leg on the right there and make it look like it's bending and still draw a big baggy pant. And not only did I feel like this like kept her in a very modern 2021 vibe, but it gave a little more coverage and I feel like it just suited her a little better. 
So yeah, I threw on some nice chunky sneakers there and then this was the other option and I liked the new option a lot better. But there was one little thing that I still felt like she needed which was just more bulk because, you know, the fashion of the Mona Lisa is a lot bulkier and mine didn't quite have that vibe. So I just elongated the sweatshirt, kind of gave it an oversized look and with that, I locked it in. Final answer. Flipping the canvas one more time, I lowered the opacity of everything and I started working on the line art. This was pretty straightforward for most of it. I'm just picking my favorite lines, but for the face, I gave it a couple attempts. I still hadn't let go of that like selfie face that I was trying to capture. Still didn't come easy. I also wanted it to kind of still look a little bit like the Mona Lisa, like the facial features. I mean, obviously it's going to be in my art style, but I wanted there to be something that kind of made you think of the original face. Please tell me I erased that and did it one more time, right? That's not what it looks like, right? Wait. Well, anyway, that's the face I <laughs> decided to go with. It's fine. Everything's fine. Anyway, I just did the line art, did the bucket hat, did the hair, the body, all the clothes shoes, some other stuff, and then the line art was done. So then I just added in a base color to the background, filling in the entire line art so that I can create clipping masks on top of that and not have to worry about coloring outside of the lines. Then I just used the original Mona Lisa and I used the color picker and just like stole colors. Does that make me an art thief? Now, as I went along, I continued to like color pick and also just adjust the colors and what I tried to do specifically for this shirt was replicate the texture of the color. So I noticed in the original painting like this fabric just looks like it has a slight metallic sheen to it. So I tried to do the same with mine even though obviously they're completely different articles of clothing here. <laughs> now when it came to coloring most of it I did just have to kind of I was gonna say be color picky? I don't know. <laughs> like obviously it's a different outfit so I had to be creative with where I put the colors. Basically I just evenly spread spread out the colors. I used blue for the pants because that's kind of like her overlayer. Again, I am tweaking the colors a little bit just to make them more unique. Like I want it to look obviously like portrait, but I want it to stand on its own like as a decent design, I guess I should say. So this is about where the colors were at on the first pass. I do change them a smidge, <laughs> but now it was time for my very favorite part. And I think you'll be able to tell that I had fun with this, but it was time to do the face. So first I just kind of like toned down the line art by making it a color a little bit more similar to the skin tone. And then I think I color picked smidge and I started getting blush. And you can obviously tell that I went crazy with this. I got to do the hands. I did basically anything where the skin was showing. I actually did steal this blush color from her hands. It's just a little bit redder there at the tips of her fingers. So I like to think that Leonardo, mm -hmm. He left that in there for me so that when I came around and I wanted to do something a little bit in my style, I would have the color and I would just add it to the cheeks. I like to think it was meant to be. I did a lot of work on those eyebrows too because like people like laugh that Mona Lisa doesn't really have eyebrows. So I did try to subtle mine down, but I think part of my style is thick eyebrows. So I didn't want to completely cut it out. And then also her hair was feeling a little stagnant. So I grabbed like a thin brush with the same color as her hair and I just kind of added extra little flyaways and squiggles. Then I just added shading to the rest of the illustration and then I also changed the color of her shoes and that was it for the design. But I wanted to add like a little like fun background element. So what I did was I actually took <laughs> the Mona Lisa ooh, ooh, art thief back at it again. Um, and I traced around her body. Then I used, I think it's image fill content aware or something, but basically it eliminates what's inside the selection and replaces it with what's outside of the selection. And like, obviously it's not like foolproof, but it creates something that like kind of maintains the essence of the background. Then I just plopped that behind my character. So there we have it. Here's my Momo. <laughs> I'll name her Momo. That's not bad. Anyway, I had so much fun with this that a little later I decided to do another portrait. A personal fave of mine. I think everybody's heard of this one as well, but it's the girl with the pearl earring. Mm. I started this one the exact same way I started the Mona Lisa, thinking that I was just going to draw it in the same dimensions as the original. Also didn't happen. At least I'm consistent. Something that I found extremely difficult was trying to draw the angle. I don't know what it is, but like the shoulder is almost perfectly lined up with like the ear and the body's kind of like leaning forward but also not like it's so confusing so that took me quite a few shots tr attempts 
On my second pass at it, after I drew in some legs, I did the face a little bit more detailed and I tried to iron out the outfit more this time. I thought since the original portrait kind of has a collar of some kind that I could include like a hood, like a sweatshirt. But then part of me was also like, I just drew a sweatshirt and I kind of don't want to anymore. But I tried and I also tried to come up with like a pose if the character was standing there. I switched up the legs quite a few times, trying to figure that one out. Wasn't happy either. Around here's when I realized I kind of wanted her to have like an oversized sweatshirt with like biker shorts underneath because <laughs> to be fair I think why I like this portrait is it reminds me of me when I just put my hair up in a messy bun and I wear a headband and I thought that would look good with an oversized sweatshirt I'm still talking about this especially since on the next go I completely erased all of that well I lowered the opacity so I could still see it you know nothing's ever truly gone and I decided to try and make her sitting because I just couldn't fathom the head being tilted in this angle and her being standing up so I decided to give her a nice sitting pose and I kept trying to maintain the shoulder where it is in the portrait, but it was extremely difficult. Honestly, this one just didn't come quite as easy as the one before, but I did end up taking her back leg there and like putting over top of the knee. So she's like sitting cross-legged. And if I like put those two frames next to each other, she kind of looks animated. She's like, boop, boop. <laughs> anyway, flipping the canvas for the 800th time, I'm redrawing her face for hopefully the last time. Kind of just figuring out where the wrinkles are going to be on the clothes and just ironing it out, making sure that the idea works, which I think it did. So it was finally time to move on to the line art. <laughs> These eyes turned out like so big and pretty. I think it's like the thicker line art. I don't know what it is. But uh, obviously in the original portrait, her eyes are a little toned down a bit. Like she has very large eyes, so I got that right. But they're not this dark, so I do lighten them up later on. I also tried with this one to kind of capture some resemblance to the face, but also in my style. I feel like I did a good job with the Mona Lisa, but then when I was like just now looking back at it, I'm like, mm, it doesn't really look like it. Mine looks much closer to like Barbie. <laughs> Anyway, not much else to say. I kind of just, you know, did the line art, you know, picking all my favorite lines and all that. I feel like I say that a lot. I did have a lot of trouble with that hand that's like hanging over the knee. I decided to like take a break from it and then come back. So I don't think it looks like that at the end. Let me go look. Oh, that's, that's all I did to fix it. Mm, I mean, it's better. And then for the shoes, I had a lot of trouble with these shoes. Um, I said that about every single thing. I'm going to erase that from my vocabulary now. But these shoes, I spent a little bit of time on them. And uh, as soon as I was done, I really realize that that foot I'm gonna call myself out on this no wait that's correct that is her right leg so it would bend that way see I thought I drew a left foot on her right foot I did it right anyway <laughs> let's move on to the coloring I did the same thing as with the Mona Lisa color picking grabbing them and swatching them <laughs> into mine uh, using a clipping mask again so that I don't go outside the lines you know using the tools available to me I really like the color scheme of this one it's definitely not something I would usually pick on my own but it works really well I mean that's probably why it was made in the first place so you can see I toned down the line art around her face. I even tried giving her blue eyes. I'm not sure if she actually has blue eyes. It kind of looks like they might be brown, but I, I couldn't really decide. And the blue was just too piercing, which maybe fits in with the original portrait, but her eyes looked black in the painting. So I was like, we'll just leave them black. But I like the look of the brown eyelashes. I don't usually do that, but it looks really, really nice and more natural, I guess. I used the color picker and stole the lip color from the original painting and uh, applied it to mine. And this is when I was like, hey, it kind of feels like it's got the same vibe, but obviously the likeness is not there as I previously discussed. And then this one, although it may not be obvious, I did try to go a little lighter on the blush. <laughs> Again, it's, like I said, it's not obvious, but I did try. I tried to go for a little bit more of a natural glow. This is me trying to be natural, clearly. <laughs> for this one, when I was shading in the hair as well, it just looked a little too shaped. But what's the word? It's like chunky, too chunky. So I took a thin brush again and just added some hair strands. It really just makes it looser, fluffier, naturaler. <laughs> After shading the sweatshirt and making sure those wrinkles all looked pretty good and then shading the shoes, which for some reason I didn't change the line art color on them. That should probably be toned down a bit. <laughs> I just grabbed a nice dark black color and added a circle because that's the background in the portrait. So here we are. This is my girl with the pearl earring. But like how I would draw it, I guess. I don't know. Do I have a word for this? I probably should come up with a name. What was this? Redrawing famous portraits in my style and in 2021. How's that for a title? Anyway, back to another blank canvas. We're starting on the next portrait that I redrew. I'm gonna let you guess which one this is. It's got two people. One's taller than the other by a smidge. They both have faces, bodies. Obviously I did mine full body because for some reason that's what I felt like doing. But can you tell? What is it? The taller character is holding something. Hmm. 
You guessed it yet? Probably. <laughs> it's American Gothic. What was very different about this one, especially from the last one I just did, I did so many sketch layers on that one that when I got to this one, I think subconsciously I was like, I just want to like make something. I don't want to worry about it being perfect. So I went from this super rough sketch, just kind of like blocking out where the person was. And then I started adding in line art right off the bat. And it didn't look too bad. Like obviously it's a bit more sketchy than like a line art would look if it was done over like a finalized sketch. But like it has an extra like movement and charm to it that I really like. Anyway, I got a little bored of doing the dude. So I moved over to the girl. I really tried to give her like the modern equivalent face of the, the American Gothic face that the lady has. So yeah, I feel like she's just like looking at this man and she's just like, that kind of noise. So like his face is like, oop, I messed up. Anyway, I tried to come up with like a modern outfit for her, but essentially I decided on like an oversized vest on top of a blouse. Now in the original painting, she has like a white collar poking out of like a black sweater. And then she has like a pinafore on top of that. So I took the white blouse as the blouse. And then I gave a black sweater on top of that. And then I used, um, she's wearing like a brooch. So I gave my character a necklace instead. And I made the same mistake with the tennis skirt. <laughs> and I was like, why did I do that again? I don't, that's not what I'm looking for. I mean, clearly it's what I wanted to draw, so I did it. But then I was like, that's not what I want for this drawing. So then I undid it. And I also kind of approached this thinking, okay, these characters are older. Like obviously in the original painting, they're made to look a little bit above middle age or at least middle age. Whereas the previous two drawings that I, re well, paintings that I recreated are kind of supposed to be in that like, that essence of beauty stage. I don't know how age that is. But anyway, I thought for this one, they're older. So I thought if the last two I did were more Gen Z, these are going to be my millennial characters. So I decided to give her skinny jeans. So there they are. And then I gave her some like pointy booties poking out of it. That's like a style I see people my age wearing and I just don't vibe with it. So to me, it looks old. I don't know. <laughs> so that's what I did for this character. Then with the confidence of that, I moved back to the uh, guy and I tried to see the original outfit is interesting what it's like denim overalls on top of like a like a button-up shirt and then there's a blazer on top of that so i was like well what's the modern version of that obviously it's like a hoodie with a coat on top maybe not obvious but that's what i did i was gonna try and give them the overalls but then i just kind of didn't we'll just wave goodbye at that idea then the final part of him that i needed to do was the arm coming forward holding like the pitchfork in my mind i kind of just always saw it as a pitchfork and i didn't really think about it and so when i got to this point I was like well shoot what's he holding and you know where my brain went first a monopod <laughs> with a cell phone on top so I now I have a full story for these characters right so we have our little Instagram star on the right and we have the Instagram boyfriend on the left and uh, maybe he didn't take the best photo and so now he's getting a little bit of a look that's what I, that's what my brain came up with so that's what we've got I also gave him glasses because I forgot that the original has glasses I don't know what it is I feel like I talk about this every time I draw glasses but I just don't see glasses. You'd think I would notice those dark black rims. I just don't. But like if I have a friend and I'm like, I want to draw you, I literally do a double take and look at their face for probably a couple seconds too long to be comfortable. I don't know what it is. It's bizarre. Anyway, I digress. I did the same thing with this one as I did with the previous two and I color picked from the original portrait and blocked it in. This one, I did have to lighten things a little bit just because it was a little too dark and like I wasn't able to see some of the details that I put into the line art. But for the most part, I did use similar colors, if not tweaked just a smidge. And this is the part where I felt really proud of myself. So for the original painting, the pinafore has like a little design with like a circle with a dot in it and it's like a repeating pattern. So I created that myself. I created like a little square with that pattern and then I actually used Photoshop and turned it into a pattern so that I could just draw it in without having to redraw. Did that make any sense? So I could like paint it in without having to redraw all the dots. So I've got like a brush and now I'm just painting in the pattern. Mm, I don't know why this just was so satisfying. I also imitated this sort of like embroidery edge of the pinafore and did that to the pants. So I did it on the hem and then along the pockets and then also on the purse. Then I moved over to the guy and kind of just did the same thing, you know, adding in the colors with the shirt, the jacket, the pants. I think the part where I like differed the most was like giving my guy character hair. But like I mentioned, I kind of was going for a millennial vibe and a lot of millennials still have their hair as of right now. So I thought it was a fair trade off. And I also just kind of missed the pattern so much because it was so fun that I gave him a pattern as well. Well, the same exact pattern actually. So now they're like cute and cohesive. Then again, since this one had like an actual back 
background and not just one color. I snagged the characters, did my content aware fill. At first I thought I was gonna have to leave it a square because you just, you couldn't put it in a place where you didn't see all those windows <laughs> with it being in a circle, but I ended up just making the circle smaller and then enlarging it. So it worked just fine. Yeah, so boom, there, <laughs> there's my take on this painting. I'm like just realizing, I'm like, why did I feel the urge to do any of this? Anyway, let's get on to the next one. Let's see if you can guess what this one is. It's not quite as well known. I felt drawn <laughs> to recreate this one for a couple reasons. One, it's a full body. Two, I feel like the outfit's already very modern looking. And three, the story behind the painting is just like so sad. So I just have a connection with this painting. I just feel things, you know? So this is the, I believe it's called, is it called the portrait of Madame X or is it just called Madame X? Anyway, I did go through a couple different um, ideas for the outfit, but I ended up going with one that was much more similar to the original. But if you don't know the story, to make a long history lesson short, essentially this guy like thought this girl was pretty and like followed her around a lot. And then finally she's like, fine, you can paint me. And so he painted her and he submitted it to like, you know, the gallery and it got laughed off the stage. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't on a stage, but it got terrible reviews. People called it hideous. They said the, the woman looked like a corpse. So not only did he have to like hide, but the person who had their portrait created had to like move countries to like avoid the shame. <laughs> Some people need to just chill. Anyway, I think this is a really nice painting. I mean, I understand what they're saying. Like her skin is very gray looking, but she has that one red ear, which I feel like reminds me of my own style. So I don't know, I feel a little connection. And then one thing that I really wanted to be as similar as possible to the original was that profile because I think it's just so striking and I really like looking at it. So I wanted to recreate it to the best of my ability. I also tried to recreate the pose like as exactly as I could. Obviously in the original, she's kind of like scrunching the dress a little bit and I didn't have that much of a dress when I was drawing this arm. So I didn't do that, but most of the rest is the same. And then obviously you can't really see her legs in the original. So I just kind of kept those simple. And then here I kind of got frustrated about something, but I'm not sure why. <laughs> Oh, cause like she's not quite as balanced or something. I don't know. Okay, so now here's what I'm trying to come up with the outfit. Or like I said, I tried to like reference back to the original outfit as much as possible. It has a very like swooping neckline, but then I was like, okay, the modern version is something more like this like cut out kind of shape. And then hers has like a chain, um, what do you call it, straps? I decided to go strapless at first. I did try some other things. And when I cropped that like section and then I was like, oh, maybe like a matching skirt with like a crop on the top, but still be kind of formal. And then my brain clicked completely different and was like, oh, Gal Gadot, she has, she wears things kind of like this. So then I decided to make the skirt sheer with like a big slit. And then there's like little shorts underneath. And since I had Gal on the brain, I also decided to give this my character a hairstyle that's very similar to one that I've seen her wear. So yeah, <laughs> it's got a little of that vibe. Then once the sketch was done, I moved on to the line art. Again, I'm being very careful to try and capture that profile to the best of my ability. I ended up like protruding the forehead a little bit too much. So I toned that down, kept the nose and the chin and the little lips. So I like to think that this is how it would look in my style and I tried my best. Then there's that Gal Gadot hairstyle. I should have found a reference because look, now her head looks like bread. I do tone that down a bit though. Then I continued the line art down the rest of the body. I actually did two different layers for the line art. So there's line art for all of like the normal stuff. And then I did a separate line art layer for anything that's underneath something sheer so that I could color it separately really easy or like lower the opacity if I needed to, just so that I could also put like color in between two line art layers so that I could like add a effects in that way too. And then I gave this hand another attempt because I love this hand. Like, I think that's another thing that I really like about this painting is this hand. So I tried to draw a little bit better this time because the sketch wasn't living up to my expectation. And what I ended up doing is kind of stylizing it a little bit more by like just coloring in flat the like fingers in the back. And it, I feel like it just captured the essence I was looking for. And I was really happy with that. All right, back to coloring. I used a very desaturated color for the skin. I mean, you could call it gray. I feel like it's a pink gray. And then I use black for the outfit, especially the parts that are very opaque. Then on a separate layer, I colored in the transparent skirt section, just so that I would have that flexibility to adjust it separately. So here's me experimenting with the uh, chains because I felt like they were just too important to leave out. So I tried it as a strap. And while I feel like it works and it could be very modern, I feel like just chains were like really in like last year or the year before or something. I say like I keep up with this stuff, <laughs> but I decided a necklace just felt a little bit more modern. So I did that and then I also gave her bracelets 
necklace and then also a ring. I was gonna call it an earring, but no. I also gave her an earring. Here's that. And the first thing that I added like some dimension and shading to was the chains. Uh, it's not my best, but if you've ever had trouble trying to like color something and make it look like gold and you're like, why does it just look like egg yolk? I want it to look like gold. Well, green is the answer. Shade it with a little bit of green, like a desaturated green and then highlight it with like a bright white orange and it'll give off much more of a metallic sheen and it's gonna look more like gold. When it came to coloring the hair, I literally just then realized that her hair has like a reddish sheen. So I tried to make it red as well. The thing is with the painting is like, it's a little bit in shadow. So it like looks very dark. So only in small little areas, can you tell that it's like a reddish brown? So when I added the red, it just seemed like too much red. It was a little bit of a battle, like kind of playing with that and trying to get it to a vibe that I liked. And since I didn't have it where I wanted it, I actually brought in the portrait. And then I color picked and snatched that ear blush color so that I could start adding in my favorite part. Can you tell? It's the blush. So I started with the ear because even in the original painting, her ear is very bright. And then I kind of just, you know, did my thing and added it everywhere else. Now the problem we had here was I added it so many places that her skin started feeling more lively and much less like the original portrait. And I was like, oh, what do I do about that? Because <laughs> I don't want to erase it. I colored in the line art around the skin with like a similar color. I feel like that even made it look more flesh toned, <laughs> we'll say. I was a little lost and I wasn't sure what to do. So I decided to kind of just put that off. It's on its own layer. It's not like I can't change it. And so I worked on something else that was bugging me at the time, which was like her hairline just was too crisp. So I softened that up, made it look a little bit more like hair. And since I decided I was not going to remove the blush, what I did was I selected it and then I just desaturated it with the hue saturation tool just to make it more gray and it pained me to do. So now I kind of feel like the critics, but it made it look more like the painting. So I stuck with it. And now I feel like it has a vibe that it didn't before. And I think it does a better job of just looking like the original. Anyway, moving on to the dress, I started adding in the shading and I also erase where it's more transparent. So where I want to be able to see the legs on the layer of the dress that's in front of the legs so that I could then lower the opacity. Does that make sense? <laughs> so like, it looks like you're seeing through it to see the legs. And you can also see like the dress. And then I wanted to be able to see like the shading so that like where it's like overlapping itself, it'd be darker. I have not done transparent anything <laughs> in probably two years. So I kind of forgot all my tricks. I definitely tried a few things and some of them did not work. I'm kind of interested in doing this again. So maybe I'll keep you updated. See if I find a better way. I'm pretty sure I had a better way before. Time to relearn. <laughs> Anyway, once it looked about like this, I decided it was probably finished. And then I imported the original painting into another Photoshop file, cropped out Madame X, bye-bye. And then I pasted that behind my Madame Y or Z, I don't know. And I came to this amazing realization that I could just put her hand on the exact same table. Look at that. It's like, it was meant to be. It's kind of funny because when I originally did it, I'm like, I'm not gonna draw a table. Her hand's just gonna be like that. I really like the hand. So she'll just be like doing something weird with her hand. But then when I did this, I realized I could put the table right behind her. And there was like too many tables. So I kind of just like got rid of those. You can see, ooh, bye. Like it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needed to not be there. So yeah, here's my Madame X. Very glamorous. I can't imagine how many countries I'd have to move if I released this way back in the day. I'd have to change my name. I'd probably have to wear mustaches, fake noses, and glasses for the rest of my life. So I'm just glad we live in a different time. And indoor plumbing's nice too, like I mentioned. So. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching. Come along with me as I shared a couple like random things that I created. <laughs> I don't know, I thought you'd be interested. I felt like Sharon. Please don't make me move countries. <laughs> Let me know which of the four you like the best or which one, maybe this would be a better question. Which of the four do you think reminds you of its inspiration the most? I feel like it's girl with the pearl earring just because she actually has the pearl earring. But yeah, let me know. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.